In this lesson series, we'll take a look at what we know about memory. First, we'll just make a distinction between episodic and semantic memory, and then go on to describe consolidation theory. First, some definitions. What is memory? Memory is the capacity of an organism to acquire, store, and recover information based on experience. Now, this is possible because brains have the property of plasticity. Learning and memory are possible because brain cells can change their physical structure. In addition, a memory trace is the biological change in the brain that represents the information acquired during the experience. Now we'll begin by looking at these two different kinds of memory. One is called episodic memory and the other semantic memory. Episodic memories are vivid, detailed, context-specific, uh, possibly emotional as well. These are the kinds of memories of our, of our lives, important events in our lives that we can retrieve. In a sense, we can relive these kinds of memories. So a recollection, when we recollect, we can, we can, pull, we can transport ourselves back in time and, uh, and uh, relive that event that happened in the past. By contrast, semantic memory is more just a sort of knowledge about the world. It's, it's more general, abstract. And even if the information is about our own past experience, it's more gist-like. So maybe it doesn't have uh, all the details, but we, we, can, we, we remember the general idea of what happened to us without being able to relive it. So semantic memory is sort of information about the world, including ourselves and our history, whereas episodic memories are, are those kinds of memories that we can uh, transport ourselves back in time and relive the past event. Let's use a, an example here. Let's say uh, on October 30, one day in school, you're uh, using the microscopes and we're putting a, uh, a drop of a culture on the slide. So maybe it's amoeba and paramecium. We're going to observe them under the microscope. And being October 30, day before Halloween, you're in your Halloween costume, and maybe the costume is getting in the way somehow of you using the microscope. Well, all of these things would be details of this particular episode. We're going to call that the circumstances of learning. There's a certain context, so where you were in a classroom, when it was, October 30, the details. You were wearing a Halloween costume, you were looking at amoeba paramecia. So these are the all the pieces of information that could be called up in an episodic memory. On the other hand, a semantic memory for that learning episode might simply include what was learned. You might have observed an amoeba eating a paramecium, and so what we learned that day was amoeba eat paramecia. Notice then the semantic memory doesn't have all the details of the context of the learning episode. The semantic memory does not include the circumstances of the learning. It just includes what was learned. Another way to show this difference is that for uh, episodic memories, we say, we say things like, I remember when such and such happened. I remember the day in class when we were using microscopes and we were in our costumes. I can relive it. I can transport myself back to that time. I have a vivid recollection of the event. On the other hand, for semantic memories, we say things like, I know. I know things about amoeba and paramecia. I know that amoeba eats paramecia. What's lacking here is that sort of vividness of the details of the circumstances of learning. I'm not transporting myself back in time here. I'm simply retrieving information about amoeba and paramecia. Now, importantly, uh, episodic and semantic memory are, are related. In other words, the episodes, the learning episodes, provide the content for semantic memory. Everything we're learning in school, right, had its start as some episode of learning. So episodic memories are providing the information that will later be stored in our semantic memory system. Now, if that storage is successful, then we will have knowledge about the world. But sometimes what happens is that we store the information about what was learned, but we lose the context and the details of the learning circumstances. And if we lose that information, then all we're left with is semantic memory. In other words, you might know that amoeba paramecia, uh, or amoeba eat paramecia, but you forget when exactly you learned it, or the circumstances of the learning. And this happens a lot in the schooling process. 
Let's do another example to show the difference between episodic and semantic. Let's say uh, somebody asks us, what do you know about such and such a couple? So we know two individuals are a couple, and we're, we retrieve information from our semantic memory. Oh, well, they, they enjoy reading, tennis, and dancing. Well, this, this would be semantic information stored in our semantic memory. These are facts about this couple. Now, if we were asked, well, how do you know that? If we could retrieve episodic memories, then we would have those as well. So maybe we know th these things about this couple because we remember specific, detailed, context-rich uh, episodes of doing these activities with the couple. So maybe with, we were there on uh, the day they had the picnic and they were reading under the tree or we were playing tennis with them sometime in the past or we went to the party with them and saw them dancing. If we can retrieve those episodic memories, then we have both kinds of memories. And depending on what the question is, I might uh, call up semantic uh, memory or I might retrieve uh, episodic memories. If somebody says, tell me what you know about the couple, I'm accessing my semantic memory. If somebody says, do you remember when you went to the picnic or play tennis or went to the party, then I'm going to be retrieving uh, detailed, context-specific episodic memories. But very often, though, we forget the specific episodes. Nevertheless, what happened during those episodes can be uh, delivered to the semantic memory system. So in other words, the episodes are providing the contents that are going to be stored in semantic memory, but we might forget the details, the circumstances of the learning. So we'll know things about this couple, but we can't retrieve individual sp uh, vivid, detailed um, memories of having events with those uh, individuals. So to summarize so, uh, so far, memory can undergo a transformation. Learning often takes place during episodes that have the potential to be stored as episodic memories. What was learned can be integrated into semantic memory. And if the circumstances of learning are forgotten, then all that remains is a semantic memory for the information that was learned.